awesome. Every day, all day. This, 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 this is how we roll. This, 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 this is 97.9. What's up, Terry? Good morning. How are you? Hey, Jason. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. A long time. Long time. I'm good, though. Good to see you. Good to be here, obviously, this morning. Great to see you. Great to be here. Um, yeah. This is a, a series that we do on 97.9 The Box. Um, uh -huh. Business Behind the Music. So what we uh, try to do with this, honestly, Jason, is just try to help people, right? So, you know, really dropping some of the game about the music business, not only for aspiring artists, because we know that's a huge part of, you know, people's interest, but also for people that are just aspiring to be a part of the business, as you know, and know lots of careers mm -hmm. that are not necessarily in front of the camera, in front of the mic, but yep. a way to use your talents and be involved in the game. And then we also get a lot of, you know, aspiring influencers and um, just a mixed bag here. So want to say yeah. welcome to you nah thanks man this is dope so you do this every uh was every tuesday morning how often do you do this every tuesday and thursday okay yeah every yeah. tuesday and thursday so and we just bring in you know variety of guests i mean we've had everybody from publicists to executives in the game you know on the yeah. record side management mm -hmm. um we've had you know uh uh, executive security people, you know, mm -hmm. just really just trying to run the gamut of what's out there and available. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, that's dope. So exactly. Dope. To show people, it's always good, right? To show people that, like you said, it's, it's so many ways to, you know, to, to, to make a living, obviously, make a career in the business other than the typical, you know, in front yeah. of the mic. So I'm all yeah, about everybody's that. Everybody's not up. meant to be in front of the mic. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Nah, so, um, nah. so how this usually works is, uh, you know, of course, we're going to talk about this awesome project that you have going on. And then sometimes people will pop questions in. If we get some good ones, we'll throw them out there and, and uh, see mm -hmm. what we can do to drop okay. some wisdom on people today. So it should be real easy okay. breezy. So listen, everybody, I'm Terry Thomas, operations manager for Radio One here in Houston, 97.9 The Box, Magic 102.1, our pop station, Radio Now 92.1, and also our online gospel, Praise Houston. And um, this series is the business behind the music. You've heard a little bit about why we're here. My guest today, I'm super excited um, to have Jason Jeter here. He's got an awesome project that he's launched with Heavy Sound Labs. But you may have heard the name Jason Jeter because he's also one of the co-founders of Grand Hustle, also one of the co-owners of All Def Digital. I would like to say serial entrepreneur because you have your hands yeah, on yeah, yeah. business ventures. Yeah. And um, just a wealth of knowledge and experience to really share with people today. So let's talk about your um, your project, Heavy Sound Labs. What's the inspiration here? It's not like you don't have a full plate. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, to me, it's just really inspiration-wise, I, I love music, right? It's my first mm -hmm. love, you know? So it's like, no matter what, I always come back to it. I feel like it's the foundation of everything that I do, you know, in general, like you said, just kind of, once you get success in music, it's like in the passport. So you get to explore other, you know, yeah. constant, you know, other businesses in a sense. Right. So, you know, I've got into fashion, got into, um, like you said, content from films to television shows to now all deaf, but music is still the, the lifeline of all of that, you know? So, um, I just wanted to double down and, and get back closer to music and do it in a new way. You know, I started Grand Hustle, when I was 22 years old, X amount of years later, you know, like now it's, 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 it's 2020. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 2020. And, you know, I said, you know, it's, it's new ways to do things. Obviously, technology, we see like how artists are, are popping up. You know, it's, it's incredible, you know, to, to be able to say that when, when, I, when I introduced uh, Travis Scott to Trade the Truth, Trade the Truth had no idea who Travis Scott was because he was all, you know, on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Right. He wasn't so necessarily in a physical, you know? So that's just the norm today, you know? So and in, in understanding that everything is happening online, digitally, in real time, when, on a global level, in real time, you know, in music and hip hop today. So um, that's really what inspired me to say that really I got to get into traffic. I have to get all the way in the traffic of where, you know, where the art artists are. You know, when I saw Lil Nas X, jump off out of Atlanta, that was like the, you know what, I already had the idea, I was sitting on the idea, just, you know, kind of hashing it out of my mind, but that's really what pushed me and said, okay, now it's time to go, for real, because it's, it's you know, it, it is what it is, it's, it's all the way here, you know, yep. 
<laughs> so this new venture, how is this, um, how is this sort of taking a different direction? I know you mentioned a lot about the technology and, you know, um, of course, Little Nas X, you know, the story there is that somebody at the label saw him, you know, online and brought him yep. to the attention of the label execs. And, you know, here we are right now online. I mean, you used to be, you know, back in the gap when you started Grand Hustle, <laughs> we wouldn't be online, yeah. you would be at the radio. <laughs> So you know, what? It, it's a lot different, right? <laughs> what? I, I would have had to, to travel so many hours and miles to, yeah. to do this, right? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, this is crazy, right? Yeah, it's crazy, but but it, but it's beautiful, right? And um, obviously pros and cons, you know. But at the end of the day, the way that it's different, I created the website heavysound.com. So now anyone can go to the website and literally a, apply to be an artist, you know, sign up, you know, um, and I'm I'm looking at information you know once again we have all of these tools these platforms instagram youtube uh you know even spotify for that you know in that regard so we have all of these different um platforms that are tools for us to show us our traction to give us data you know so i've um i'm building out a, a app you know and and the technology to really kind of compare all of this information, you know, so now that we can make really smart decisions or smarter decisions, you know, in the past, obviously it was just kind of gut, right? Okay. I think mm -hmm. this is happening. Now let's do this. Now it's like, let's look at all of the data and now let's really invest, you know, in, in a smarter way for real, you know, now let's find artists. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to artists in, in Lagos, Nigeria and South Africa, and obviously Houston and Seattle and Atlanta all over the world at the same time. And um, what's really unique about what I'm doing, though, is, is I have what I call a heavy crew. So back to, like you said, you know, you, myself, we, we had a passion and a love for music and to be behind the scenes. So, you know, if I said I'm redefining what it means to be a record label today with mm -hmm. the idea of going online. So now what does that leave interns and street team members, you know, I've been all of that. I've been on street teams. I've been an intern. So that's my history, how I got in the game. So I just thought about that, you know, and I said, now I want to um, carve out something for those guys. So now I started what I call a heavy crew. So you can go to heavysound.com. You can hit the heavy crew. If you don't want to be an artist, but you do want to get closer to the music, you do want to um, network with like-minded other individuals. You want to learn from proven industry experts. We have a, a Slack channel. It's um, about 800 and something people in a Slack channel, and, and we're talking about different isolated um, topics, subjects, you know. Um, we have every Saturday morning, we've been doing something like what you're doing. We, we call it the heavy talk, you know, so from four to six, every Saturday, we literally, we, we bring on proven industry um, experts. We've had Tuma Basa from YouTube. We've had Coach K from Quality Control. We had Dame Dash. We've had, you know, just a, a several super successful people need to get you on there as well, <laughs> you know, and, um, and, and, and yeah, you know, of course, just, you know, same, same goal, right? Just educating people um, and, and showing people stories that hopefully will inspire them to, to go and spark some interest and go out and, you know, and, and reach their goals and dreams. I love it. So yeah. um, how, how is this, um, how is this going to differ from you? For you, this this project. How does this, how is your strategy different from when it was prior when you were sure. label? Man, I mean, for me, it's it's just like I said, the, the amount of tools that we have access to are incredible. You know, mm -hmm. so now, um, in in a lot of ways, it's not different because it still is mm -hmm. the foundation of the music. And once you you know, I have open app, open application, so there. I've seen over a thousand artists during the pandemic, you know, come through yeah. and, and apply, you know, but to be honest with you, talent, talent. So, you know, out of these thousand artists, I'll be lying if I said that, that 80% of them were, were ready, you know? <laughs> so, right. I mean, yeah. So, but, but the great thing is, is I'm working super smart. I'm at home right now. So I'm not going yeah. to clubs, right? Same. I'm not going to clubs. I'm not I'm not doing any of that right now. I'm just at home just looking through, you know, all of this traffic for real, you know? So, I mean, that's one way that it's different. And once again, I have resources. I have the heavy crew, which um, I see a lot of uh, heavy crew members in the room right I now. See them, the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have the heavy crew, which is like digital A&Rs, once again, all over the world. You know, so now we're incentivizing these guys um, to to bring us artists. You know, we're incentivizing these guys to be a part of the process. You know, so that's um that's a, a little a little different. But at the end of the day, really, I said that 
I based all of this off of my real physical experience. And mm-hmm. I said, how do I, how do I transfer what I've done in the past, which is like analog era? <laughs> like, right. How do I, how do I take that? And how do I do that today in a smarter way? And technology has just made me really kind of scale these things out and, and do things in just a much smarter, easier way in a lot of ways, you know? Um, but yeah. of course, more challenging in some ways as well, you know, because we know that there are definitely a lot of pros that do come to the physical as well, you know? Yeah, makes sense. Mm-hmm. So um, one of the things that you mentioned, I want to dig into a little bit because I see some of my frequent flyers here that would love to Dope. have an opportunity Dope. to work with you. Mm-hmm. So um, when you say they're not ready, that means that there's a certain readiness that you're looking for. Can you sort of sure. define that out? Like in your estimation, when you're looking to really bring an artist in to heavy sound, what exactly are you looking for? What does ready look like to you? Sure. To, to me, ready is, uh, number one, when you hit the artist tab on heavysound.com, I have a series of questions designed as if we were having a conversation with each other, you know? So the first round of questions we ask, upload your socials, your Instagram, your YouTube, all of that stuff, you know? So the first the first round of questions um, we're really just looking at how often are you putting out music, you know? Mm-hmm. So when I, when I say not ready, you know, you have artists that <laughs> you, you have TikTok and stuff like that out there right now today, right? Yeah. And, and this is the, the downside or the tricky part about technology. So someone can can feel like, oh, can be an artist, you know, mm-hmm. and, and can be active on TikTok and things of that nature, but you really have no video at all. You mm-hmm. really may, may have put out one record, you know? Um, so most artists like that typically are not it's too early but mm-hmm. of course there are those chances when there, there are those seldom Outliers. times when yeah you know what i'm saying you have those unicorns out there right that mm-hmm. man wow here's this lady here's this young girl she has one record and it's fire and she got a deal and you know so you have those um situations as well very seldomly but ready to me means that a lot of artists really truly don't know how to present themselves, you know, because I think that in today's world, it's super challenging, as, as you yeah. know, like, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, if you were artists, you kind of had like less jobs. Now as an right. artist, you have to be an artist, a, a marketer, really an engineer, if you want to really record music a lot, <laughs> you know, like yeah. you, you have to be a PR person, a stylist, you have to really kind of, yeah. you know, know how to really present yourself in a consistent way. So a heavy sound, we, we give artists a lot of information. We give them a lot of strategy, you know. Um, I, I give you one example. There's a kid, All Started Great, a guy in Newark, New Jersey that we partnered with. He had a, a, a project that was already out on platforms. And I was listening to his project, heard his project. He uh, came to the application. And I said to him, I said, hey, I think this is a great project. And nobody really knows about it, honestly. You know, I'm looking at the numbers on Spotify. You have the numbers aren't you know, no one knows about you. And I think that's the challenge for all new artists, right? You're a new yeah. artist. So you're the only one pretty much talking about yourself at the end of the day, you know? Um, so I said to him, I said, why don't we pull this project down and re-release this project through Heavy Sound Labs, you know? So I took one of his records off, off the project, got him a premiere with, with Fader, you know, which attracted much more eyeballs. And of course, we gave him strategy, helped him with his artwork. And um just re-released the project and got them a lot of traction on just doing this right on IG lives with different yeah. DJs around the country. And literally he got views, <laughs> you know, um, of course he's still new. So it's not like he had like billions of views, but I mean, his views increased probably 5,000% <laughs> mm-hmm. from what they were already, you know, so yeah. he didn't do any more work, but really coming into our program and, um, and working with, you know, some, some, a good team, a proven team, just help them strategize and, and, and get more traction with this project, you know? So to me, yeah. I think that um, ready can be a, a tricky a tricky word for it. It can be ready, you don't have enough content out, or ready, you just really don't know how to present yourself all the way for real, you know? Mm. You yeah. know what? I think you're making such a great point about sometimes it's, or a lot of times, it's okay to take a step back to really yep. propel yourself forward. And I think yep. one of the things that people... Um, you know, they just don't really have patience with the process, right? Yep. And so, you know, we're very much in a, I want it now, I gotta have it now society, but people really don't understand how long it really takes to work Man. on People don't know don't understand. And and also the the reality too, you know, the challenges and, and I always 
I compare everything today to what what I, what was what I knew yesterday, right? So the challenge today, I think, is like you said, definitely microwave mm -hmm. era. Everything can happen so fast, and when it does happen, it seems like it happened so fast, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and and of course, every artist thinks that they're gonna jump right on the playlist, just like every artist wants to to jump right on the radio in a sense, right? You know. And I always tell artists, I say to me, if you're an artist that no one knows. You know, you're a brand new artist, and now you, you expect to get on the Rap Caviar playlist or something like that. I equate that to an artist coming outside a radio station and just standing outside a radio station trying to catch Terry play on the way up. Play. Yeah, play me. It's no difference, right? It's like yeah. the same thing. It's like, like, who are you? Why should I play you? You know how many yeah. other people want to play? Like, come on. You know, so to me, artists have to understand, and people have to understand, you have to build a story. Yeah, you know, literally, I have to build a story. Now, if I'm going to meet Terry, I have to say, hey, Terry, I'm Jason Jeter. I don't know if you heard of me, but I'm being played in X amount of clubs in your local area in Houston. These are the reasons why you should know me. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm sure Terry would say, oh, shit, I got to check into this. You, okay. you know, like, but yeah. you gotta, I got to give you something to work with, you know? So that's what I think. Um, like you said, a lot of artists are impatient and, and just don't understand that, but that's just the reality for real. You know? Right. And then I would say, please don't lie. Oh my God. Please nah. do not lie. Never. <laughs> I think it's important to have confidence, but please do not lie. Because as we're here on technology right now, both Jason and myself have numerous resources available to us to verify what you're, what you're sharing. So Please, please, please. It's okay not to be where you want to be yet, but please yep. don't lie about where you really are. I think that's really challenging. So I see yeah. a couple a uh, couple questions in here. So I got my dude, Mix Jordan. He's a frequent flyer here. He's a producer. He makes beats. You mm -hmm. know, he's trying to really connect with something, but he's concerned here. The question is about putting yourself out there and having people steal your stuff. What's your opinion on that? I think that, um, honestly, I hate to say it, but I think that's an old school way of thinking. You know, um, I think putting your stuff out there and having people steal your stuff, I think you have to handle your business. And I think that there's a lot of stories that I've heard about, um, even Fetty Wap. When Fetty Wap first record came out, I guess Trap Queen, you yeah. know, you had the, the infamous story about how, how the producer was out of the country and, and some other country didn't even speak English, you know, um, and the producer didn't even know his record was out there. You know, right. so I think that, excuse me, in, in today's world, I think that that's one of the great things about technology, right? I keep hearing people, I put my music out, I put it online, and I didn't know that such and such did a record, but the record blew up. We didn't even know each other, and the record blew up, and then we did business together, you know? So um, I, I think that really you have, to, you have to put your music out there. You can't, you can't sit on music. It's doing you no good. You know, um, I'll tell you a story is no, no one wants to, to get played, but at the end of the day, um, a lot of us, you know, have, have done things, um, for, for relationships, you know, when yeah. I was coming up and I was working in Patchwork Recording Studios, I connected a friend of mine, Raekwon came down, he did his, his album, Immobilarity, and I promise you, I connected my guy, he, he ended up doing probably like four or five beats on the album. I didn't get $5, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but right. um, it got me closer to to where I wanted to be, you know? So, I mean, I think that people shouldn't even think about people stealing their music. Just truly, you know, protect yourself, copyright your music. And if that happens, you can double back and, and you can get even more money. <laughs> like, honestly. Yeah, no yeah, doubt, right? right? Yeah. And we've talked about that a lot here. It's like, you know, handle the business about your music you know you are the, whether you're a producer whether you're an artist influencer whatever you're, it is that you're trying to do you are the ceo of you yep. and it's really important to double back and make sure that you're handling the business surrounding you a lot of times we just want to be in front of the camera or, or on the mic or on the tv yep. or whatever the heck it's gonna be so you know a lot of times we just want the glory and the fame but yep. understanding that you know things need to be handled behind the scenes. Speaking of behind the scenes, uh, shouts out to Michael Watts. He's in here. Michael Watts, you know, OG. Uh, also, we got Ask Iggy. He's got a good question um, about heavy sound. He says, are the services fee-based or do artists sign with heavy sounds as a promotional component, like a traditional no. record label? Great question. So, so artists sign to heavy sounds like a traditional record label, you know? 
And um, the deal structure is, is pretty different because I know it might be a little feedback. The deal structure is, is, um, is unique because there's a three, it flows in three parts, for real. You know, phase one is, uh, is discovery. Phase one is discovery, so it's an 80-20 split. Phase okay. two, it evolves, your deal evolves to a 50-50 split. And then phase three is growth, which um, our goal is to partner with major labels, you know? So you asked me earlier, what am I doing different? Mm -hmm. I say often that I'm not really doing too much of anything different because my goals are the same. I, I, I've always signed artists independently, invested in them, showed traction, and partnered with a major label. So that's my same goal. So I'm trying to do this in 24 months. My deals are 24 months long, exclusive. And um, our goal is to prepare you to partner with a major label because we know major labels really aren't in development business. That's true. That's like gone. And one of the key things yeah. I think is missing is artist development. So I want to talk a little bit more about that as it pertains mm -hmm. to what you're doing now with this particular project. You know, specifically, what are the areas that you are diving into to help artists develop better? I mean, you know, like I'll give you a case in point, Jason, you know, uh, artist is on like whatever radio tour pops up at the radio station and you know really doesn't know how to do an interview doesn't know how to act in a business setting you know and then ends up you know entourage ends up screwing things up <laughs> you know, now like nobody wants you at the station they look at you like yeah. oh, um, you know like it that stuff really happens right you know entourage absolutely be the most the biggest undoing for a lot of people so yep. talk a little bit about specifically the areas of artist development that um that you can help people with sure um so like you said it's it's really it's, it's things like that is mentorship right you know um and i think that once again most major labels the, the, since i've gotten into the business i've seen a decrease in in um in employees and an increase in talent you know once again, because of um, technology and accessibility of technology, right? People record music at home. So you look at the, the music um, chart, the do-it-yourself segment is outpacing the major label segment and growth as well as the independent segment and growth because everyone's, you know, has that ability to, to, to record at home, you know? So I think that now what you see is everything's happening so fast, move them in, move them out, move them in, move them out, move them in, move them out. It's like a, it's like a revolving door, you know? So now to your point, when I look at an artist, I feel like um, I want to go to the, to the highest level, you know? Everyone, you know, T.I., Travis Scott, B.O.B., like these guys have had a, a tremendous amount of success for real, you know? So I always say, can an artist sit on a, on, a, on a late night show on a couch and conduct himself or herself and have a conversation, you know? So for me, I believe in a lot of these old, old uh, traditional things that most people aren't doing anymore. Like you said, just um, giving them the information. You mentioned entourage. That's a million percent right, right? Like people will have no idea. So to me, I feel like all me and my team can do is give you the information. Now it's up to an artist to really kind of respond to it, to take it in to follow it, we'll give as much information as as wants it, you know what I mean? Um, so on the artist development level, that's just real, and I think that that really happens from a from a continuous um, just transparency and, and communication, you know? I feel like everything we do, we should really just talk about so that, you know, as things grow, uh, it's not a new thing, you know what I'm saying? It's like you do something, and now let's evaluate what we just did. You know, for good or bad, let's evaluate that. Let's make that a regular exercise so that by the time an artist gets here, it's not a new thing, you know? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a lot to it. Someone asked a very good question. Um, I'm sorry, I wanted to answer it. When... The one from Lemonade Sauce? The one yes. That's... <laughs> yes. And I flagged that right here. I was like, oh, that's the next question. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. That's a, that's a great question, um, Lemonade Sauce. Why go major? Why not stay independent? And yeah. um. I mean, that's a great question, and, and I, I'll say this, right? It's, I feel like, me personally, I want to be in business with artists that want to go big, you know? Um, and that's just, that's, that's, my, that's my background, for real, you know? Um, 
T.I. has won multiple Grammys, and yeah. obviously you look at somebody like yeah. Travis. Well, yeah, so, you know, to me, that's another component to the to the company as well. You know, I want to diversify um, an artist's career, you know. So I say that I want to help people become creative entrepreneurs, you know. And um, independence is great, you know. There's no knock on independence, but at the end of the day, I feel like an artist shouldn't have to work physically for everything. You know, and that's something that often happens with independence, you know, um, and, and, and an artist, you know, touring is great, but you're going to get to a point when you're going to be tired. Well, <laughs> yeah. Look at what we're going through right now, Jason. What touring, right? It, 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 if exactly. your bread and butter is touring, what touring, right? Ex exactly. If your bread and butter is touring now, clearly in today, you're, you're eliminated. You're sitting at home trying to figure out how you're going to get some money. You know, if mm -hmm. you're independent, um, that's just the reality, you know, so I want to Ralph Way, what's up, Ralph? That's one of our artists right there. Super talented kid from South Africa, now staying in, in Massachusetts. And, um, oh, my hometown. Ah, nice. M music is incredible. But to me, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, um, I'm looking at really for real doing things, business on a global scale. And to me, if you're going to be the biggest artist, that means that you're going to perform on the Grammys, you're going to perform on a global level. And we need resources. We need support. You know, um, I think that a lot of people think about the, the money and want to own everything and all of that stuff. And that's cool. You know, um, number one, I'll say this, too. I think that some artists should stay independent. Mm -hmm. But I think that if you want to be the biggest artist, if you want to compete on the highest level, you need more resources. You know, now it's different ways to deal with major labels. You know, that's another thing that I want to just make a reality. Um, you can deal with a major label. You can go sign as an artist. You can go and you can partner with a major label. You can go and get distribution and get their resources. You know what I'm saying? Um, so there's so many different ways to work with a major label. But personally, I'm all for working with major labels to help um, just have more people sitting at the table, more people fighting for the same thing and pushing the artist to be on the biggest scale. So for me personally, I want to work with superstar artists. Mm -hmm. That's a great, great answer to that. Uh, we've got a question here from Beats Intentionally says, uh, what would you recommend for an unknown songwriter that has songs? Says, I've been in music 11 years, just been in prison, and music is one of my best talents. What would you recommend? Uh, I would recommend an, own, an unknown songwriter to, to connect with artists and producers. You know, and um, you, you, if you have songs, you need to get people to sing your songs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you need right. to network with, you know, people in that realm, in that world, and um, and really deliver them songs. I mean, it, it's so many singers in particular that don't write their own songs, you know. So the first mm -hmm. thing you can do and the best thing you can do is get with these people. And I think a lot, a lot of artists, a, a lot of people in general always want to look at the established artists, you know. Yeah. So... You know, you may be a writer and you're chasing like Beyonce or somebody, you know, it's <laughs> good luck. You know, um, I think that <laughs> yeah, <good luck. laughs> like, like, I, th I think that you should um, identify, you know, who you feel like can be next up and invest in that person, that artist early, you know, and collaborate with them. Look at someone like Billie English. Like, look at her. Like, you know how her and her brother created music together as brand new artists, you know, people and blew up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So well, I mean, I love everything about Billie Eilish. I love the entire man. story, you know, because that's like two people that have a dream that came together and gotten it out, and now both are reaping the benefits. I, I think I love that personally. So uh, Lemonade Sauce has a, another follow up. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll say. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I was going to say Lemonade. I was say, I'll say one more thing. Okay. Go ahead. I was gonna say one more thing to that question. Um, back to the to the songwriter. Uh -huh. you know, go go work at a studio. Go work at a recording studio and meet all the artists coming in the door and connect with somebody and get your work heard. You, you know, know what? I had a had a great convo with Shannara Butler on this series, and she was really mm -hmm. diving into that too. It's like let's not be so focused on trying to get to the artist that you miss all the people along the way that could potentially connect you. So build yep. with everybody. Because you, you know, like she was talking, and I love this analogy. She said, when she goes into a studio, she makes friends with everybody, even coming in the front door. She said, especially the engineer. Everybody sleeps on the engineer. 
but the engineer works with everybody. So with you everyone. can build a good relationship with you yeah. know, like the engineer or whoever's handling the reception or just the people that nobody pays attention to because we're so busy focused on the superstar. You know, that's a person who has the ability to put your names in rooms that you're not able to get into yet. So Look, that's a huge man. part of networking. Yeah. Let's listen. Now I was gonna say my, my story is I, I I worked at Patchwork I opened the door mm -hmm. you yeah. know and um and and there was so many people DJ Toom he was a a local um producer that people knew but he didn't reach his full potential yet and I saw that and I said Toom let's find an artist together I was just yeah. a, a a little door opener you know what I'm saying <laughs> but <laughs> but 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 Toom you know he, he whatever he liked me and, and and he listened to me and we went and found an artist and it helped both of our careers. <laughs> expand right? incredibly you know so yeah every, i'm all about looking at the future and not paying attention to the present because um I, i'll say this too real quick people have to understand and be mindful that what are you offering a person everyone's asking certain people slim thug what up thugger <laughs> so what's up h town yeah h town slim man slim i just want to tell my slim thug stories real quick slim okay. thug paul wall when we was coming up man just Great example of going out and 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 getting it, making those relationships, networking, coming to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying, and and um, trading off on resources, trading off on on relationships and things like that. When we were both coming up, but I mean, those are great examples of how we both were just networking, and no one was afraid to kind of share anything. Now, Slim, I, I salute Slim because. He told me from the beginning, I'm independent, G. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love that. And, yes. And, yeah. And, 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 and I learned a lot from, you know, from watching Slim and just the culture of, of independence out in Houston, for real, and, and, and figuring out how to apply it to what I was doing. You know? Well, one of the things yeah. that we talking about Slim, and not just because he's here, because I say this all the time. Sure. One of my favorite things about Slim is that he has diversified his portfolio. And, and I'm going to dive into that a little bit more on the next session on Thursday. But, mm -hmm. you know, I liken being an artist oftentimes is like being an NFL or something, right? The average artist has a short window here to be yep. able to get out here and do what you do. Now, sure, there's exceptions. There's the Tom Brady artists that are out there. Slim is one sure. of the continues to make music, but it's important to diversify your investments. It really breaks my heart to see artists that have had a modicum of success, but have nothing to show for it years down the road. So one of my favorite things, and I think one of the things that people could really learn from somebody like Slim is to be able to, with your team, and he's got a team that's been with him for a long time, with your team to find ways he serves the community Community, but he also has diversified you know he's into different things he's got the clothing line he, he builds and renovates houses you know a lot of a lot of just different things that he's into and I think that's an awesome example for artists in general it's like yeah you love the music thing but music don't love us it doesn't I love radio radio <laughs> doesn't love me we love music it don't love us man, love it don't music. love us man. So oh, how man. can you set yourself up with what you can gain from the music business so that you can continue to do what you love for as long as you want to be able to do it, but you're also able to feed your family, take care of your responsibilities, et cetera, et cetera. So. Oh, man. You couldn't have said that any better. Music doesn't love us, mm -hmm. right? Like, no matter how much you love it, <laughs> it's it does the, the streets don't love you. Music don't love us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, um, and, and to me, that, that's truly what it's all about, right? Once you get success, Success, it's like yo, you gotta, you 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 don't have the luxury. You don't have the luxury yeah. of time. You have to figure out how to diversify your portfolio instantly. You know, yeah. and for me, that's something else that I did unique, right? I went and understanding this and knowing this, um, knowing that you know when when I have an artist and we hit success, like what's next? You know, like you said, um, Slim diversified. We we diversified. You know, with Grand Hustle and, and just different industries in the fashion and. And, you know, we have things that were like blueprint things for hip hop. But to me, I'm like, okay, what's next? Now we're in 2020. So now instead of liquor, uh, we can also go into cannabis now. You know, we can also go into gaming. We can go into technology and, and different things of that nature. So for me, what I did was instead of going a traditional route and, and partnering with a major label, I went out and I went to Santa Monica and I, I partnered with a, a VC shop yeah. called Science, you know. And these guys, all they're doing all day is is creating new businesses you mm -hmm. know so to me you know i've always 
I, I literally made the name Grand Hustle, right? So this is my mentality is always like, yo, I'm hustling, I'm hustling, I'm hustling. But as you mentioned earlier, as we start knowing more stuff, I'll say, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Slim Thug's a serial entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so you realize like, hold up, like we, from where we come from, it was hustling. But now, damn, as, as I really kind of see what's going on in Silicon Valley and Santa Monica, what's the difference from, from this guy's mentality and my mentality? I love right. creating new things. I love building new things. I love setting new challenges. And I need to have multiple revenue streams. You yeah. know, so um, I think that that's something that's also super different um, for, for my company is like when I work with an artist like a Ralph Way or anybody like that, now we can sit in a room and anything you could think of. We're, we're not a normal record label. Record labels are only interested in talking about record sales revenue, streams revenue. And yeah. then you want to talk about publishing, go to the next floor, go to right. the next building, talk about publishing. Nah, I'm, I can sit in one room and hey, if you have an idea, you have a crazy thought, you want to go into construction, you want to go into whatever that is, let's sit down and let's brainstorm on this and see what's the best way for us to get there. Let's set this roadmap early, you know, so we can put these indicators, which I think someone like Kanye West is a great example right now with, with the gap, you know, yeah. um, X amount of years later, once he has success, Kenny Burns, what up, Kenny? What's up, bro? Once he has success, Tyler, what up, Tyler? Once, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Kanye gained success. He does this gap deal, but look at reverse that and look at the roadmap on how he was putting these, these, these dropping these little things out there for so long so that now once he made it to the room, how could they deny him at this point? You know, it's so authentic, you know, and I think that it's that's what people plan. always got to understand. Yeah. It's, you yeah. know, having a plan is essential. And I always tell people when I, when I mentor people, work with people, I'm like, well, what do you see? Like, what's the end goal? Let's like, I get you yep. don't know how to get there. That's what I do, yep. right? I help you create the roadmap. But what do yep. you clearly see for yourself in the future? Tell me what that is. And then let's mm -hmm. reverse engineer it so that you can put yourself in the best position possible to get that. I also want to clarify something that you said, VC, because I know there's some people in here that sort of went here, venture capitalist company. <laughs> and what those companies yeah. what those companies do, and, and Chameleonaires from right here in Ace Town, mm -hmm. he's a yep. VC, he works with VCs, is yep. you know they are specifically companies that are looking for cutting edge business ideas. They invest, they pull to help people pull together, you know, business ideas. And one of the things that I think a lot of people discount is sometimes I think in hip hop and in music, we're too cool for the room. We, 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 we think we know who the cool people are, but we really don't know who the cool people are. Master P popped up to the station a couple of years ago and he told the uh -huh. most amazing story about how he thought he was rich until he really got into a room with rich people <laughs> and then he realized a few things. So, you know, yeah. I always say approach every situation with an open mind and an open heart. And let's not always judge books by the cover because you really don't know what somebody is bringing to the table. And a lot of times, you know, uh, especially in hip hop, it's a lot of flashy this and flashy that. But oftentimes it's the person who looks most unassuming who has the most power and influence. And so never count yourself out of an opportunity without really knowing what's going on. A lot of times people cut off their nose to spite their face, like my grandmother would say. So. Oh, man. So, so often, you know, so yeah. often. And, and that's the thing, right? You have to, <clears throat> like you say, you have to have an open mind. Yeah. You know, and, and you have to have um, humility as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to humble yourself if you truly want to continue growing. Like yeah. you said, you know, because, you know, some people like to be in a room and be the big person in the room. Right. Yeah. Some people kind of yeah. like to be the smartest person in the room, whereas others, you know, the real smart ones like to really not have the most expensive house on the block. You know That's what right. I'm saying? And kind of <laughs> get in the room and, and, and come up, you know, and, and see what someone else can do to instill into them so that they can grow, you know? Yeah. So for me, that's something that I did. Um, I, I could have easily said, hey, I know how to build a record label. I know how to, I know people at all of these majors. I can go and I can have meetings, but I actually went and, and I, I met new people. You know, I met new people because I wanted to do new things and I wanted to connect with people that, um, that you know, were thinking in the realm on the same page that I'm thinking and I'm really truly focused on the future, you know? Mm -hmm. So I partnered up with some good guys. My, my partner, one of the, um, the CEO of Science, he's the former CEO of MySpace, you know? So his mentality is all about community. These guys helped, um, I don't know if you guys know about Versus Versus Play. It's a guy named Delane, young mm -hmm. black guy, has a video, a gaming company that raised like $94 million in like 18 yes. months, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, that's a great story. And, you know, for me, I just wanted to really kind of 
have that 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 different experience. You know, I, I believe that I can't do new things the old way. I love it. Um, This is a really good question. And it comes up a lot, honestly, Jason, you know, especially in the business, in all aspects of the entertainment business, really, how does Mm -hmm. age play a part? And it's specifically, the question is, how does age play a part with marketing an artist? How does age, um, is that, is that if, if an artist is a little older, I'm assuming? I would, I would take it from that way. I would assume. Yeah. I don't often get questions on the young end of things. It's people that are still out here grinding, yeah. trying to get it. Yeah, and yeah, maybe a little bit yeah. older. And, you know, mm-hmm. finding a lot of times, you know, that they're getting the door slammed because people are looking at their age and not looking at the talent. So, you know, you and yep. I are very fortunate and blessed to do what we love to do. But, yep. um, you know, that is a reality for a lot of people. They're wondering, you know, like, have I missed the window? Yeah, I think um, I think age it just depends on what, what you're focused on. You know, if you want someone else to invest in your music, age is a reality. You know, if you want to go and partner with a major label, that that's a reality, right? If you're over a certain age, most likely they're not going to invest in you. Unfortunately, they're not going to be honest and tell you that. But that's the real. You know, if you're a 45 year old rapper, they're not going to invest in you. I've never seen it happen yet. Not to say that it won't ever happen, but chances 99% are they're not going to invest in you, you right. know? Um, but I, I do think that, once again, technology has changed the game now. You know, there was a time when if you were 30 years old as a rapper, it was over with, you know? Um, so now, because of technology, you can get out there and you can put music out and you can carve out your own audience, you know? And you can service that audience. But I think that your 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 expectations need to really kind of be monitored a little bit you know if you're um if you're an older artist less people are going to invest in you you're gonna have to put more of an investment in yourself and prove it i i do like the the fact that you mentioned like you know kind of knowing your audience so you know if you're Mm -hmm. let's say let's say you're a 45 year old rapper like who are you who are you desiring to rap to like who do you think your audience is and then to be super serve your audience you know i make this analogy a lot like in the instagram world for example you know you could have 100,000 followers, but no engagement. You could have 20,000 followers, but you really have a lot of connection with your followers and a lot of engagement. And that $20,000, those 20,000 followers could have put a lot more uh, gas in the engine of your career than 100,000 that really are just sort of drive by. So I do think it's situational. And I think that every artist may not be global. I see uh, Ralph Way still here. He's got a great question, by the way. But um, you mm-hmm. know, every artist may not be global, but you could have success in your area and you could carve a career in your area. Both Jason and I know people that may have had one song. I'll use a great example, Cupid with the Cupid Shuffle. My man Cupid has made an entire career off of one record and he will Absolutely. Cupid Shuffle and remix Cupid Absolutely. Shuffle and Cupid <laughs> Shuffle 5.0, no, but he's Absolutely. made an entire career off one song. So Absolutely. I think knowing, knowing your audience and then, you know, figuring out what does success really look like for you? What does it really mean? We could all say we want to be rich and all of that yeah okay i get that we all want that but take that and put that to the side what does success truly mean for you as an artist or somebody that wants to be out into the world what does that really look like and then again yep. first engineering that so uh Ralph, hey, I, 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 I don't want to say one thing on that because i think you made excellent points and to me i don't don't miss i don't want anybody to miss think what i'm saying all that i am saying is be realistic yeah and if you're an older artist don't chase the major labels because I'm just being, I'm, I'm a realist. That's not going to happen for you, you know? But now, if you're an older artist, you can create that energy. Look at Griselda. I think those guys are a great example, right? Those mm-hmm. guys, you know, are late 30s and doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? Those guys yeah. co- collectively combine their, their, their resources and their talent to really gain a lot of traction, which is another thing that I think that a lot of people don't really do for real. I think a lot of older artists, great friend of mine, Killer Mike, Perfect mm-hmm. example, right? Killer Mike didn't start doing running jewels until he was like 35 years old. So this guy was 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 trying to be an artist, trying to break through as a solo artist, clearly for 15 plus years at this time. You know, but the fact that he had the um open mindedness to try something new, try something different and say, as, yeah. as opposed to saying, I'm a solo artist, I'm a solo artist. He said, you know what? I'll try to be in a group, even though I consider myself a solo artist he does something different and bam and it works for him and he's a huge artist right now and he's underground he's not at a major label and trust me 
shows aren't happening right now, but Killer Mike, Run the Jewels, those guys are doing every festival in the world that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? They've had so much success in a different way. So I think that, um, you know, that's just something else for older artists. Like, also be open-minded to try new things. Yeah. You never know how it's going to happen, you know? And and if you do it right, the money will chase you. The opportunities will chase you because somebody's going to see the movement that you have. You create a movement, whatever that movement is, you know, yep. and it may come from a different way. It could come from a label. A label could sit here and say, you know, there's something here. I want to dive into it. But if not, sure. it doesn't mean that there's not other people with other opportunities that they want to align, like strategic partnerships. They want to align their yep. brand with your brand because they Absolutely. see you have a particular connection with your audience and they'd like to tap into it. So, you know, I think Very that success can come a lot of different ways. And uh, oftentimes we get tunnel vision and we only see one path or one way. So, you know, sort of Very stepping percent. back, being open-minded can be helpful. So Ralph Way, your artist on Heavy Sound, has a okay. good question. He says, how often would you suggest an artist to release music? That varies. You know, that varies. I think that um, I suggest every artist to... Um, to try to put themselves in a position where they can record themselves, you know, um, create your home setup, you know, so that you can execute on your own and everything that you do shouldn't cost you money to do it because you're running a marathon and you're going to run out of stamina, you know, in that way. And I use um, Russ out of Atlanta as a perfect example, you know. Great example. Great example, right? I met Russ, Carol Lewis called me up few years back, I don't know, three, four years ago, before Russ blew up at all. I had never even heard of Russ at this time. You know, Russ had about 40,000, a little less than 40,000 Instagram followers at the time that I went to Russ's house to meet Russ, you know. Russ was in the basement, actually, of his friend's house, Bogus's house, not even his own <laughs> house. So his yeah. friend's house. They had a studio in the basement. And Russ, man, this was like, it taught me so much, you know, just going and talking to this kid at this time. And, and he said to me, he says, listen, um, I, I hadn't heard of him, you know, and his conversation was so international. I'm like, yo, I, I'm in Atlanta. And this is another thing, Terry, that told me, like, yo, you got to get on. You, you got to go all the way digital, you know, yeah, because yeah. Russ is, is talking from Alpharetta, the Alpharetta suburb of Atlanta. Yeah. He's talking about Saudi Arabia and, yeah. yo, the, the girls are waiting for me. And, and I'm like, what? Like, nobody knows who this kid is down the block. What is he talking about right now? But he's you know? global. But yeah. he's global. He's global out of his house, you know? Yeah. So, so of course, I, I say, okay, so so tell me your story. How, how'd you do this, you know? And and he grew his career, his following, really large on SoundCloud and on YouTube. And he did this by releasing a record every Tuesday for a year straight. But Russ, obviously, as some of us know, Russ produces, yeah. Russ engineers, all so Russ, all of it. So Russ equipped himself with the ability to record his own music without spending money, money, tapping into his own creativity and programming it out every Tuesday. So I think that that's something in general that um, even more so than how often do we release music, like you have to program your consumer the same way television and radio programs the audience, right? You got to know if I'm doing it first Fridays, every Tuesday, whatever that is, let me program my audience to expect things from me on this at this time consistently, you know? And I think that that's truly the key for real um, for new artists is consistency, man. You got to, you can't, you can't come today and, and go home and go to sleep and come tomorrow. I always uh, relate that with like starting up a coal engine. It's like, yo, you get the car started, keep driving. Yeah. You get the yeah. car started and let it turn off. And if you, if anyone's ever had a raggedy car, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You like, try to leave it running while you're running the store. Like, hey, I'll, I'll be right back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. So uh, Ashley DeVos has a question. She says, if a song is really good, like Hit Potential, should an independent artist push it for two months or just go to the next song and release and push that one for a month? So I think ultimately she's saying, you put a song out, how long should you push the song before putting out another song? Man, I think, um, I think you know, once again, I would say to anyone, you should gauge your traction. You know, if you have a song, you put the song out, you know, look at look at the indicators, look at your numbers, you know, look at the audience, what's happening with this record, you know, um, and you can push the song and you got to get to a point when if things aren't happening your way, 
go to another song. But in the world of today, that doesn't mean that the song is old. That's the greatest thing about today, right? You have a catalog yeah. and, and it's been, I don't know, say five months, six months, and I've put out, you know, um, 10 records. All 10 of these records are still brand new. Yeah. You know? So someone's always discovering these records. So that doesn't mean it's not like a, a major label is we moved on. You know, your, your plan can keep adjusting for real. But I think it's just about consistency because we know that someone may have discovered you on your eighth record, on your eighth song released. And now that I discovered you on the eighth record, now I'm on SoundCloud or YouTube or wherever, and now I'm binging the first eight records that you put out. And now yeah. I might have said, damn, I thought I liked the eighth one. This brought me here, but I really love the third record. Wow. And now I'm telling all of my friends, you know? So I think that um, it, it, it really just, it, it's a tricky thing. And, um, and, and no song is old. For real, these these are brand new records. I have a great story about that. So mm -hmm. um, there's an artist, you know, it's a country artist. Well, whatever, Chris Stapleton, right? Yeah. Um, huge artist. I live in Texas. Country music's big. Mm -hmm. So Walter B, one of my DJs. Uh, you know, I love all music like you do. We consume everything. So I already mm -hmm. knew the song. Love the song. Song called Tennessee Whiskey. So one of my DJs, Walter D, he calls him. He says, Terry. He says, if you play this song, I guarantee it'll work for Magic 102. So he hits play on his on his laptop. He's and I'm like, Walter, I love that song. It's Tennessee Whiskey. So he was, you know, DJing out of the grown up clubs, et cetera, et cetera. And he's like, hey, people are dancing to this. Now the record was already old and it had already been a hit at country radio by that time. Yep. But you. I like to break things. So I put it in on Magic, right? Boom. Shots yep. takes power rotation. Could still be a power record right now. And the song was old. So I bring that out to say that, you know, music has a way to find its audience. And if people really rock with it, age doesn't necessarily matter. That it could feel like a new song to people and they'll embrace yep. it just the same. So and, you know, and, don't and, sell your catalog short. And, and let's, let's add to that is back to, that's one of the tricky parts about technology, right? Like right. now... It, it makes you feel like it's old because, you know, it's on and you can see your views, your numbers, all of that. But in the analog era, in the traditional sense, you know, we released records locally. And these records, before they, they grew to a national level, some of these records have been almost a year old out here in the, in the marketplace already on a local level. You know, um, we've had several people that, that, that that's been a, a normal thing for uh, getting my local Southeast region hot on a record before it made it to to Houston yeah. to the southwest side you know so mm -hmm. by the time it made it out there a lot of a lot of times the artists would say that wow this record's too old because it's four months old or a year old even but man that record's brand new to everybody else in the world so it doesn't even matter you and know? you can't and and I know this from radio it's like all right here's one of the radio things that you know and you heard this too Jason y'all play the same records and I'm like no, we play the records people still want to hear. Now, that may not be your favorite record today, but I will say this. The audience, and that's your fans and your followers as an artist, the audience is never done with your record when you think they're done. Like, there's Absolutely. sometimes I'm like, please be done with this record because I'd Man. like to go on and play something else. But the audience tends to stick and stay on their favorite songs because the great thing about it is you've made an emotional connection with a fan through your music. And man, that's everything. So don't be impatient with how much people love your song. They may love your song. Like there's artists, they, every artist has that one song like, man, I wish I could stop performing that. But I always say, hey, why? Because why? that fan is sitting there at that show and they're just dying for you to sing this particular song because it's everything to them. And I get the artist part, you always want to be new and different and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The true yeah. stuff still works. The audience is never done with a song before, when you're right, done with it. They're just not. If they love you, they love you so much. So yeah. um, this is a really good question. Um, and I get this a lot, Jason. Does okay. talent even matter anymore, or is it just about, about entertainment? Depends on what kind of artist you want to be. <laughs> right? right? But know, I want to um, your answer, because I, I know sure, I, 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 I definitely think that, um, when, first I start off there, right? And, and back to my, my questions, when you go to heavysound.com, they flow in this way, because I'm trying to understand psychologically like what your goals are, you know? So I think it, it truly depends on what kind of artist you want to be. Um, but so often we will, we can say that we see because of the way that things work. Um, we see that artists that really work hard, that, that network and, and make friends and collaborate with others, you know? Um, we see a lot of these artists today 
get better as time goes on, you know, yeah. um, and, and, and become a lot, a lot bigger than the artists that were a lot more talented than them, you know? So I think that, like I mentioned earlier, the artist music's the foundation, but today there's so many other variables that, that go into making, making it now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's definitely not just about talent. I've worked with some people that have been super talented and also not very, um, not, not really a lot of hustle, with mm -hmm. them, right? Don't want to go to the to the nightclub, to the club, and sit in a DJ booth and patiently build a relationship with these DJs so that they can records can start playing. You know, a lot of people um, that are talented, to be all the way honest with you, a lot of people that are talented feel like that entitles them for everyone else to do a lot of the work for them. You know, and I think that now that allows the other person that's not as talented to out hustle them, outwork them, pass them, and eventually get better than them. Also. You know? No doubt. Yeah. I always say yeah. I'd rather take somebody who might be rough around the edges on the talent side because I'm a great talent coach, so I can help. Mm -hmm. I feel like Absolutely. that's my secret sauce. I can help polish yeah. you up. But if you don't have heart, if you don't have hustle, yeah. there's nothing yeah. I can do with you. I'd rather take somebody who's rough around the edges. This is a, a really, really good question um, from PA The System as we're talking mm -hmm. about uh, talent and so forth. It's sort of on the team basis. He says, is it easier to work with an artist that has an established team already, or do you prefer to work with just the artist? I prefer to work with an artist with a team, you know, okay. because at the end of the day, it takes a solid team to win championships, you know? Um, so if you really want to go to distance for an artist, I suggest every artist to, to, to establish a team, you know? Um, and that's something else that, that we aim to do with, um, with the heavy crew as well, you know? Now, and a lot of artists, a lot of these new artists, they don't have teams, so, you know, to me, I want to be able to help them form a team for real, because absolutely, I, I like to work with teams. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a new day. It's not really about whole handing and babysitting. That stuff is, is pretty much out the window. I think that an artist should have an engineer that they consistently work with, um, a group of producers that they consistently work with, should have a creative director type of person in their corner. Obviously, that content person that's also um, invested in them in, in their corner, um, a stylist, you know, creative director can be the stylist, right? But someone that really, truly uh, of that package, you know, that, hey, you know what? We're self-contained. Now all we need to do is plug into a bigger system to get amplified and get some more guidance and some more help. I, um, I always like to tell people, nobody should roll with you that does not have a job on your team. Nobody. You're paying the freight for people, Right. And so if they're not providing value, you love them, but I can love you and you could be at home and I could have somebody out here with me that has a job. So I always tell artists, please just don't be rolling with people. Everybody should have a job and everybody should want to be excellent at that job that they do yep. so that they yep. can be an asset and not a liability. I'm telling you, entourages can ruin careers if you're not careful and you put the wrong people around you. Um, what? It's time right. after time, time All after time, time. time. And, 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 and people don't people don't realize either. And that goes back to some of the things mentorship and just giving people information, right? Because at the end of the day, like you said, that's my biggest thing. If you're gonna have people around you. Make sure that everyone serves a purpose. Everyone's rowing the boat. It's literally no different than being in a rowboat and everyone's on a boat. Who's not rowing? Yeah, you're right. dead weight. If you're not rowing in this direction. Some people are rowing backwards. <laughs> we are rowing forward, right? <laughs> like, so it's like, you got to assess who's rowing in the right direction. Right. If somebody's not rowing, you got to get off the boat. If you're rowing in the wrong direction, you got to get off the boat, you know? And that's the reality because, unfortunately, you look at artists and most of these artists, like, after years and after you get success, the people that weren't doing anything, they're going to be the biggest problems at the, at eventually. They're going to develop to be the, the largest problems because... You know, it's a crazy sense of entitlement and people don't know how to separate. Okay, I was there, but did you contribute while you were there? That's a big one. <laughs> That's a big one that a lot of people don't understand right there. Yep. All right, cool. Jason, man, you've been awesome. We are actually out of time, but I just want to say thank you so much for hopping on today. This has been invaluable. And before we go, I do want you, once again, I've tagged Heavy Sound Labs here. I've tagged Jason on Instagram. But uh, one more time, the website that people can go to to get more information about your projects. Absolutely. So anyone can go to heavysound.com. If you're an artist, hit the artist tab. 
if you are expired, you, you want a um, career in the music business, you want to network with other creatives, other like-minded individuals, hit the Heavy Crew tab, you know, because we have a community and we're just building and we're helping to, you know, lift all of ourselves up. We're helping to lift artists up, but also instill knowledge so that hopefully Heavy Crew members could go on and become successful entrepreneurs, get jobs or whatever your goals are in the world. So heavysound.com is a place. I love it. Jason, thank you yeah. so much for taking the time. It's been a blessing. Thank you, thank Terry. You. Thank you, Terry. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. All right. Peace, All right, Fox fam.